A lot of news came out this week that suggests that the PlayStation 4 that launched at the end of 2013 will not be replaced anytime soon. So I started to think, a PlayStation 5 at the end of 2020, what would that all mean? And it all came back to one of my favorite games of all time and the inevitable sequel. Because Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is in a very interesting spot. In this new episode of the Your Game Show, I want to make a case for why I think that Horizon Zero Dawn 2 will be a PlayStation 4 game instead of a PlayStation 5 exclusive. I think at the end of the episode, you will agree. So let's get into it in this video. If you enjoyed that, then a like would be super appreciated and let's go! Sony is going to use the next three years to ready their next video game move, according to the Sony CEO, as reported by the Wall Street Journal. Although it was noted by someone from Bloomberg that this does not mean that the PlayStation 5 is three years away. Since he interviewed the Sony CEO as well and makes the point that the expected drop in profit from PlayStation could also imply a big cost due to a new hardware launch. So he thinks we will get the PlayStation 5 at the end of 2020. And we also got earlier this year Jason Schreier from Kotaku report that the PlayStation 5 is still ways off, with sources saying that they haven't heard about a new platform yet. And those sources include people that are also working at Sony-owned studios, so you must think that they know something, right? And then we also got the video game industry analyst who works at the MPD Group, a group that reports all the US game sales. He also thinks that fall 2020 is the time for the PlayStation 5. So with many people predicting it or reporting on it, I think that it's safe to assume that fall 2020 is a very likely possibility and that leaves the sequel for Horizon Zero Dawn that released in early 2017 in a weird position. So there are many reasons why I think the new Horizon Zero Dawn game will be a PlayStation 4 title instead of a PlayStation 5 title and one of them is that three years of development time since the original should be enough time to develop a sequel looking at other open world RPGs as well like Shadow of War that launched at the end of 2017, while the previous game Shadow of Mordor launched in 2014. We also got another example Dragon Age 2 that launched in 2011 and then we saw Dragon Age Inquisition in 2014. And of course it's hard to compare games and development studios, but I think it still shows that it's totally possible that Guerrilla Games has their new game ready in three years after the release of the original. Looking at the track record of Guerrilla Games as well, it seems like they're capable of releasing new titles rather quick and sure an open world RPG should take more time I would imagine than a linear first person shooter with a multiplayer mode. But yeah, they were able to release a new Killzone game every two years, so a new Horizon type of game every three years would not be that weird in my opinion, especially if they release the game on the same platform. At the peak of the Horizon Zero Dawn development there were 250 people working at Guerrilla Games in-house with also 100 people outsourced in China for art assets. At this point there are 270 people working at Guerrilla Games according to their LinkedIn page and on top of that they have 28 job openings at the time of this recording. Meaning that there are already now more people working on this sequel than there were at the peak of the development of the original, with them likely going to 300 plus developers at some point during the development as well. That is huge and shows you that Guerrilla Games is hard at work to create this new quote epic open world game as noted by the job description and oh yes I can't wait I'm sure it will be epic. It was also noted many times by Herman Hulst the managing director at Guerrilla Games that since they already got the engine and the expertise from the first game so they can now build on that and create new stories more easily. Also a lot of things that did not make it into the original can now be worked on for the sequel. During an interview with Noclip game director Matthijs de Jonge noted that he did not want to share all the things that did not make it into the original because they might work on it at a later date. Is there any other like things like that that, that never that didn't make it into just didn't work? Uh, there are a number of things that we might save to a later date. So yes, the five, six years they needed to create Horizon Zero Dawn from scratch is not the same as they would need for a sequel. But there is a larger picture here. It's also about a Sony themselves. With the PlayStation 5 launching at the end of 2020, 
Sony does need exclusive games to facilitate that. To keep players busy and also happy and honestly it makes a lot of business sense as well to release a new exclusive at the end of the console life cycle since there will be way more potential buyers than at the beginning of a new generation. But more on that a little later as well. Because there's a nice point I want to make regarding Horizon as a franchise as well. Going back to Sony as a whole because let's take a look at E3 for example. And then I don't mean this year's E3 but next year's E3. Because if the games they will focus on at E3 2018, so Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us Part 2 and Death Stranding are the only exclusive games we have left on the PlayStation 4, then what will they show at E3 2019? Spider-Man will be a year old by then because it will release on September 7th 2018, so really soon after the June E3 2018 show. I think it's a safe bet that we will see Ghost of Tsushima, the samurai open world game from Sucker Punch in 2019, since their last game was Infamous Second Son from early 2014 that received DLC in that same year. And yes, five years to build a new IP should be enough looking at Guerrilla Games and even Santa Monica with God of War that was basically a reboot for the franchise and also took them five years to make. I can also see The Last of Us Part 2 in 2019 as well with the game being 50 to 60% done at the end of 2017. But yeah my point is even if those release dates are not correct and The Last of Us is going to 2020 E3 2019 will be really boring if they will not have a new first party exclusive to talk about. Because sure Death Stranding sounds like a 2020 title to me looking at Kojima's track record as well. I mean sure The Last of Us Part 2 might launch later than E3 2019 as well so later than June 2019. But at that point it will be a game we've seen many many times before just like Death Stranding. So while this year they can get away with no first party exclusive announcements at E3 because they have the gameplay reveals for three of their big upcoming games that will be enough of a shocker at E3 2019 they got to show something new something else to end the PlayStation 4 life cycle. And no PlayStation 5 games at E3 2019 make no sense because Sony does not tend to talk next gen before they officially unveiled their next system and that will not be in 2019 if the hardware is set to release at the end of 2020. I thought it was interesting to take a look at E3 2012 because it gives you a good idea of what a final E3 for a system, in this case the PlayStation 3, looks like. One of the big things was the first gameplay trailer for The Last of Us that was announced at the end of 2011 during the Video Game Awards. So that was huge, but the gameplay for the new Last of Us game will be shown at E3 2018. So the magic will be gone at E3 2019 if they show The Last of Us Part 2 again. At E3 2012, Sony announced a new game, Beyond Two Souls, that released a year and some months later as one of the final games on the PlayStation 3. We also got a trailer for PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale and God of War Ascension got a release date. So I think you agree right that if there are no more PlayStation 4 exclusives coming that Sony would be missing something big at their E3 2019 show. But Horizon Zero Dawn 2 or whatever it will be called can be that new exclusive, can fill that gap. Out of all the studios that Sony owns, Guerrilla Games is in the best position to deliver a new game before the PlayStation 4 life cycle ends. We all know what the other big studios are working on, I either mentioned their game already in this video or they just released their game like Quantic Dream or Sony Santa Monica or Polyphony Digital, the Gran Turismo studio. And an argument might be that Horizon Zero Dawn 2 would be a great PlayStation 5 launch game but I would argue that Sony could have other titles to show the power of the PlayStation 5, games that could way better be used as a system seller than a franchise that still needs to grow. The game director on God of War wants to make the next title in the franchise quicker than the five years he spent on the original and let's be honest having God of War 2 in the first year of the PlayStation 5, so 2021, three years after the original, it doesn't seem unlikely especially since there's no DLC planned for the game according to the developers, so after their well-deserved holiday break they can 
immediately start building on this next game. So I totally think it's smart to use God of War 2 as a system seller instead because that title is already big enough and will have people run out to get the console. And sure the same thing will happen for Horizon Zero Dawn 2 since the original sold well 7.6 million units after one year and was still number two in the top downloads of Europe in January 2018 in the PlayStation Store. And that is really huge by the way for a one year old game but it has way more potential to grow. Those let's say 8 million people that now bought the game will likely be interested in the sequel as well and by the time the hype train rolls for this new game new people that heard about the first game but never got to try it or because they just got a PS4 will be eager to play the sequel as well. So Sony has millions of potential customers but if they then strand this new game on a completely new hardware with only a few million people that can buy it others that are not ready to jump to the PlayStation 5 yet will just ignore Horizon Zero Dawn 2 and not care about it. Limiting not only the sales potential of this game but also the growth potential of the whole Horizon franchise that already has Funko Pops and a ton of merchandise but also a movie and official Lego potential. God of War already has this legacy, people want that game but Horizon Zero Dawn still needs to grow a lot. So to release the game on a platform with at that point maybe 100 million units out in the wild would mean a lot of eyes on this game and on the Horizon franchise, something that can never be achieved as a launch game of the PlayStation 5. And that Horizon Zero Dawn 2 will be a PlayStation 4 game does not mean that it could not come to the PlayStation 5 via any sort of way. Even if, and I hope that this is true, the PlayStation 5 will be backwards compatible with the PlayStation 4. I can totally see them release an upgraded graphics patch with a 60 FPS option for the PlayStation 5. So then Horizon Zero Dawn 2 can still be used to showcase the power of the new hardware while not limiting the sales at all. And get Guess what, it's also a great incentive for people to upgrade because you already got a game that will then work on the new machine and will feel like a game made for that new platform. I really see no reason to limit the potential of a Horizon sequel and with Guerrilla Games going full force with a ton of people working on their next game, I totally believe that they can hit a 2020 date and release the game on PlayStation 4 instead of it being a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Again, Sony can use God of War 2 that could release in the first year of the PlayStation 5 in 2021 as a system seller that is exclusive to this new platform. While of course for Horizon people will still run out and buy the PlayStation 5 but as a franchise it could really use the push. All the exposure to in the end become as big or even bigger than God of War. Sony tends to do two big shows per year, E3 and also a show at the end of the year, either Paris Games Week or PlayStation Experience. And if Sony wants to support the PlayStation 4 for more than two and a half years, a new exclusive at one of those shows makes a ton of sense. So if Horizon Zero Dawn 2 will be a PlayStation 4 game indeed, then I think an announcement at the end of this year, so either at Paris Games Week or PlayStation Experience, just a teaser trailer would make sense, and then a gameplay reveal at E3 2019, and then a release in 2020, like September at the latest, and then you would have a three and a half year development cycle. I think it makes sense, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And I hope you will join me next week for a new episode of the Your Game Show here every Sunday on the channel. Subscribe to Miss Nothing, drop a like to support the channel, and check out my previous episodes as well about E3 2018, the six biggest unannounced games, and the five games that I think will steal the show. E3 is upon us, I'll be going. Follow me on social media at Your Raptor on Twitter and at Your Raptor on Instagram for a behind the scenes look of my adventure. And of course, I have a ton of content for you coming to the channel as well. So, will be a great time. E3 is really, really close. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.